what I need. God will provide. And I plant my seed. What he said he will do. Every storm he's going to bring you on through. God will provide. God will provide everything that I need. God will provide just what I need. Oh, God will provide when I plant my seeds. What he said he will do every storm he's gonna bring you on through God will provide everything that I need as long as the earth remaineth there will be seed, time, and harvest. Seed, time, and harvest. Father, I thank you today for my family all around the world. Joining me in Wisdom World, the world of the Bible. Wisdom World is the world of peace. It's the world of overcoming. It's the world of discerning. It's the world of joyful decisions. It's the world of learning. And here in the mentorship room, we come to you, our master mentor, and ask you to teach us today your laws, your principles, your protocols. We gladly embrace your instructions. We gladly embrace your cautions, your warnings. And we welcome any whisper of wisdom that changes our life stops the pain and births hope within us for changes. Amen. Mike Murdoch here, family. I'm so thankful you're with me today. God's with us. Very grateful. Very grateful. Conversations are often memorable, especially with someone you admire. One of the greatest friendships I ever had in 76 years of life on earth was with Dr. Oral Roberts, the president and founder of Oral Roberts University on, in Tulsa, Oklahoma. I was in my mid-30s, 34, 35. And the Lord brought us together. He had watched me for months, seeing on television for Jim Baker, Paul Crouch, Trinity Broadcasting, Lester Sumrall on the 10 television stations of World Harvest Ministry. 
He was driving me down the streets of Tulsa. And I looked at him as he was driving me. And I said, Dr. Roberts, what is the greatest secrets of your ministry, your life? I said, I've never been with any man on the earth who's accomplished anything comparable to you. Nobody. Or Roberts University has produced thousands upon thousands of Christian ministries, Christian business people. When you drive in one entry, the praying hands are shockingly glorious. I always wanted them at the front of my house. In the distance was the prayer tower. Where a prayer team never quit praying 24 hours a day. Or Roberts University produced some of the most powerful anointed leaders on the earth. His enemies said he hired the best of the best on the earth the highest level intellect he could find. They spoke of him doing that very critically, but I was impacted by the fact that he was a pursuer of uncommon people. His son Richard said, I want you to meet Daddy. And we walked on the platform of the huge maybe center where Tom Jones used to sing for 25000 a night. And he grabbed me and said, Mike, 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 I've waited 25 years for somebody to write the songs you're writing. And he held me close. He said, nobody writes songs like you. And I've waited 25 years. Later, we wrote songs together. I wrote theme songs for his gigantic worldwide TV ministry. Then he wanted me to spend days and time and vacations and Christmas time with him. And I have never felt so valued by anybody in my life, ever, like I was valued by Oral Robert. So I looked at him and I asked him, what are your secrets? He glanced over at me and looked back at his steering wheel. Very slowly said, Brother Mike, I don't think anybody has ever asked me that question before. And he nodded. I was in shock at 34, 35 years old, thinking, what do you mean? Uh, who couldn't be around you and beg you to correct them, advise them, direct them? What am I doing wrong? There's nothing more glorious than to be in the presence of a man who will share his life's discoveries with you. Nothing like that. Nothing comparable. Not even the singing of Maverick City compares with the impartation of glorious wisdom. And he looked at me and he says, the greatest secret of my life is sowing a seed for a desired result. Sowing a seed for a desired result.
aiming a seed, targeting a seed to produce a harvest that's needed, desired, and possible. Then he continued. He said, Brother, Brother Mike, God's taught you a lot about the seed that he never taught me. He said, you know more about the law of the seed than anybody I've ever met in my lifetime. I was kind of shocked and stunned and really didn't believe him, of course. I thought he was just trying to encourage me. Later, we stood together in my apartment he had for me on the 58th floor of the City of Faith. He said, a businessman told me one time, Brother Mike, he said, Oral, you're the only man on earth I know that can look out the window and see where all his money went. And I told him, I says, Dr. Roberts, I know a lot about sowing, but you've mastered reaping. You understand the harvest, and I don't, I'm not, I'm not there. I sow a lot, but I don't reap like you have reaped in your life. And I really need to understand how to sow. And then I remembered his teaching. You must look at God as the ultimate source of everything. And then you must sow something you've been given to authorize him to release the harvest. And number three, you must expect God to do what he said. God is your source. Sow a seed. Time is a seed. Love is a seed. Money is a seed. Everything is a seed or a harvest. Knowledge is a seed that comes. We learn to write, read, multiply, talk, communicate. Conversation is a seed for information, knowledge, and understanding. Conversation is a seed for trust. When I hear you talk, my spirit responds. I either trust you or I doubt you. What are seven seeds that guarantee a happy harvest? One is the seed of an apology. If you want to write this down. An apology is the golden secret to all relationship. Because you will make mistakes. You will become angry. When you're sick, you will say wrong things. And you must learn the power of asking someone to forgive you. You can't even get to heaven unless you ask Jesus to forgive you of your sins. Apology requires character. Recently, I had an experience with someone and I knew in my heart that person, if they lived 969 Methuselah years, would never ask for forgiveness because they never believed they were wrong. One of the most popular books in the world was written by a man named Dale Carnegie. How to Win Friends 
and influence people. They have seminars all over the world on that book. I've read every word in that book probably three to four times, probably, maybe more. In that book, How to Win Friends and Influence People, he says a statement. Nobody ever really believes they're wrong. So never try to convince somebody that they're wrong because they become combative, warlike, fierce, retaliators, attackers. They become very mean. During a poisonous confrontation. At 76 years old, I believe him. People justify all of their actions, everything they say, everything they do. I'm sure some of us are exceptions, hopefully. But the word apology means I made a mistake. Or Roberts also told me that everybody makes mistakes. In his wording, Brother Mike, every human gets off track. It's impossible to stay on track because we're mere humans. The key to life is to recognize quickly when you're off track and as swiftly as possible, get back on track. An apology stops a lot of pain. A pain in others, pain in yourself. Apologize quickly, swiftly, immediately when you know you've made a mistake. Oh, I am so sorry. I mis I misunderstood something. I didn't hear right. Other people would say, I'm sorry. I didn't communicate that clearly and properly. I found myself one day looking at people and saying to somebody, so you didn't understand that, huh? And months and months later, the Holy Spirit chastised me and said, you should have said, I didn't make that clear, did I? Accept the blame. Accept the responsibility instead of hurling it in somebody's face. Do you see the difference in the worlds of those two sentences? One sentence says, so you didn't understand me. I, in one sentence, threw the poison of blame into their face to forever carry. When I should have said, I'm sorry, let me try to explain this right. I, I, need, a, I need a little help on my, my communication, don't I? Thank you for bearing with me. The difference is profound. An apology has to be learned for it to be effective, healing, and restoration. Is there anybody you've wronged in any way? Send them a little book, a gift book. Hey, Brenda, thinking good thoughts about you today. You sure have been a blessing. Parenthes, please forgive me for that last conversation. I must have been sicker than I realized. Smile. Always your friend, Mike Murdoch. Show sorrow when you've hurt somebody. 
doesn't mean it's your fault. It means you remove the burden off of them. The second seed that guarantees a happy harvest is the adaptation. Adaptation to someone's expectations. Adapting to their schedule. Adapting to their focus, their chosen focus for conversation. I was reading some wonderful words about me this morning by a great preacher of the gospel. He runs 150,000 in his church. He's a genius. He spent nights and days in my home. He's a master genius. And he had written some good words about me and showed our picture together on social media. And I took a picture of it because I admire him incredibly. We spent the day together a few days back. He flew thousands of miles to be with me. How did I meet him? I was in Abuja, Nigeria. My luggage was close. I was six hours from flight time back to Dallas. Very anxious to get back home and I don't really love traveling. Though I traveled for 56 years and own three jets, I don't like traveling. You travel to experience an event. The phone rang. Very few people have my cell phone. Very few. He says, Brother Mike, a friend of mine has wanted me to invite you to preach at his church for many years. It's his dream come true. And I said, I'm so sorry, Bishop, I'm so sorry. I can't do that. Today is Saturday. I'm leaving in six hours. He said he would give anything if you would come speak at his church on Sunday afternoon. I said, I'm so sorry. Maybe next time I come to Nigeria, I'll be able to do that. I looked at my luggage. I was in the beautiful suite. Now I looked at my luggage. I want to be home. And he made one statement that has stayed with me for a lifetime now. He said, he's really a man worth knowing. He's really a man worth knowing. And that stopped me. As we say in Louisiana, it stopped me cold. I'd never heard those words like that before. But I trusted this man's opinion immensely. I said, okay. I'm going to accept that what you said. He's a man worth knowing. The next day, no commercial flights were available. I had to charter a special plane. And when I got to that city, my two pilots were there. The city government would not let me spend the night in that city. They said, you have to leave by midnight and fly on to Lagos. We won't let you stay here. I didn't understand the protocols. I didn't understand the, I didn't understand that. 
but I have been taught honor. Fortunately, I've learned the law of honor, my world. On the way back from 35,000 people gathering, this pastor looked at me and he shook his head. He said, this is a dream come true. I spoke for him two hours. As I got on the plane, he hands me a, a bag of money like this. I didn't even know I would get any money. I don't ever request money for speaking anywhere. Not even for Quick Star. Not even for companies. I sow what I know. Freely and swiftly and quickly. And when I got on the plane, we got in the air and I started counting. Hundred dollar bills, forty thousand dollars, forty thousand dollars in hundred dollar bills. I could tell you four more, but my enemies studied me carefully. There were more blessings than that that came. All I did was adapt. Remember when Pharaoh called for Joseph. And Joseph shaved his beard. He adapted to the expectations of Pharaoh because the Egyptians hated beards. And Joseph found out about it. So he adapted. The seed of loyalty. The seed of loyalty. I hear the strong voice of the great great grandmother of Solomon and David, who ushered in the lineage of Jesus of Nazareth. I hear the voice of a woman named Ruth as she looked at her embittered mother in law. So saddened as they left Moab. And her mother-in-law, Naomi, said, Ruth, I'm going to a different country. Your husband, my son, is dead. Your father-in-law, my husband, is dead. Your brother-in-law is dead. Please stay here in Moab place of cursed by God. It's a place where Moses died, Deuteronomy 34. Moab was the son of incest. When the daughters of Ruth, daughters of Lot, got their father Lot drunk in a cave, and while he was drunk, they had sex with him and produced Two sons, and one of them was named Moab. And Ruth looks at Naomi and says, I will never leave you. I will never leave you, nor forsake you. Your people will be my people. Your God will be my God. And the rest is history. Loyalty is rare. It's not a decision of convenience. It's a decision of character. I well remember a gathering of ministers in South Africa, Johannesburg as they begin to crucify a preacher who they had heard had sex, illicit sex, and was going through a divorce. And I stared there. I didn't know the man. He was a well-known man. I says, guys, have any of y'all called him? 
have y'all talked to him? And they looked, stared at me coldly. And all of them shook their head no. I said, don't, don't y'all think we should call him first and ask him what he's experiencing? Let him talk to us about what he's going through. If he's had illicit sex, let's, let's pray with him, pray for him to be delivered. If he's going through a divorce, he may, his heart may be broken. We don't even know the truth from his point. Why, why, don't we all, why don't we all call him, guys? Loyalty is, loyalty is the proof. Fabulous. Both fabulous. Can you put them both on? Yes. Loyalty is the reaction of character. I could talk to you about loyalty for an hour or two. It's so rare. Loyalty. Creates trustworthiness. Four preachers. Close to my heart. Actually my favorite preachers. At one time. All got involved in cocaine. Not together different parts. One was kicked out of the church I'd bought for him. I paid for his church. The newspaper destroyed his reputation. He had to leave the city and he came to spend time with me. He wasn't straight. He was uh, untruthful. But I wanted so bad for him to keep his ministry, sustain his ministry. Loyalty. Another one who's going to commit suicide and call me. And from a hotel, I chartered a plane to stop his suicide. A famous preacher on TV. Another famous preacher on TV got very messed up with sex partners and he called me would you come spend two days with me to pray with me and talk with me nobody knew I knew about his sex problems because I came very close to having a sex experience with one of the ones he, he, he had she tried very hard beautiful woman sexy and I almost fell so I understood why he fell. And I came, spent two days. Brilliant man, far smarter than I will ever be. When people begin to ask me questions, I said, he has God's grace on him. He really has an anointing of God on his life. He's a very special man. Loyalty will fight for you. Loyalty won't try to destroy you. The next seed is integrity. Don't make mistakes with crookedness. Avoid lying at all costs. Avoid thievery at all costs. I came back with a large offering from three months overseas. Had it in my briefcase. A young man with me was filling out the visa, the entry card back in the United States. And he filled out, I said, he's my assistant. I said, son, you, uh, you, uh, you have here that it's eight or nine thousand dollars, son. It's not. It's over three hundred thousand dollars. He said, surely you're not going to tell the customs that you're carrying $300,000 around in your briefcase. I said, oh, yeah. He thought I was a fool. He said, you know, if it's 10000 or more, you have to go to another room. 
and all the the men will gather around you and they will go through every single. I said, I know, but you don't lie. Don't lie. He thought I was crazy. He stood back there and the man looked at my passport information. He says, you you have 300,000 plus. Yes, sir. He said, go in there. Boy, he was rough. They came out and they brought me into a room and they threw everything out on a table. They began to count to the pennies and the nickels and the dimes. And they stared at me when they got through. I could say many things. I filled out paperwork. I filled out all kind of applications and things. But I had peace in my heart. You see, I had a preacher friend of mine I went to college with. He's one of the sweetest men I ever knew in my life. And he made a deal to sell his house in a crooked way with his neighbor. He didn't know his neighbor was recording every word that he said. And they put him in prison for one year. He was a man of God. A lot of healings under his ministry. But he played financial games. Keeping this for himself. Moving things around. It's important. It's important. Integrity is telling the truth no matter what you lose because of it. It's a seed. There's another seed. The seed of caring, mercy, helping people. I wish I'd have kept a record of all the money I've given to the homeless. I gave 600,000 to an orphanage, orphan boys in South Africa. I've given almost 600,000 to people, children in Mexico. I built a three-story dormitory for preachers sleeping on the ground in India. (laughs) Built a house in Pakistan, sent thousands of dollars I never kept up with all that I'd done. I say this. I believe that when you care for the broken, God will make a way to you. God will make a way to you. God will provide for you. I still believe in the tithe and the offerings. A lot of people don't. I do. I do because, not because of the Old Testament, because Jesus made a statement that even the Pharisees, who were the lowest people in the religious world, the sorriest, crookedest people on earth, he said even the Pharisees have enough brains to return 10% of their income to God. The tithe is 10 cents on the dollar. I've been working through some things that I sold a home. So I've been working through some of my giving and where I'm giving and where I'm sowing. It's big to me, important to me to please God in the, in the tithe. I could say many things. I don't know where you tithe, but please never, never steal the tithe from our God. The purpose of the tithe is to sponsor preachers of the gospel. Tithers are the reasons there's pastors and churches. And pastors are the reasons there's prophets, teachers, evangelists, and missionaries. 
If there were not pastors, there would be no evangelist and no missionaries, no teachers, no prophet. When you can, read 1 Kings 17, where Elijah the prophet saw a woman that was a widow and her son was about to die. And he asked her for her last meal. That seems so cold to me. There's nothing sweet about that picture. And she looked at him and says, I only have enough food for my son and I to have one more meal before we die. Elijah didn't put a finger in her face. He didn't say, there's a reason you ain't got any money. You don't work, you're lazy. There's a reason you hadn't been paying tithe. All Elijah did, and he was pretty rough, but he had just walked 85 miles from the brook Cherie to the city of the, the village of Zarephath. And he said to her, I, uh, I want you to let me have part of your last meal first. Let me start the process. I'm sure she looked at him stunned. What man of God would take a woman's last meal on the earth? I can't even think like that. But he began to describe to her, what you have is a seed. If you keep it, your life is over. But if you sow it into a man of God, and I'm the man of God, that's bold, isn't it? I don't know if I have that kind of boldness. In fact, I know I don't. But he painted a picture of a possible future and said, you will never lack in the famine. I may have made some mistakes along the way. A couple lady came up with $450, as I recall, at the pulpit at the Wisdom Center. And she gave crying and said, here's my money and offering to you. And I received it. And I started to pray and she said, it's my rent money on my apartment and it's due tomorrow but I need to give it to you first and uh, I won't pay my I'll see if God will give me money for my apartment rent and I went to pieces I said oh ma'am oh ma'am I can't take that I said God is just as pleased with you paying your rent tomorrow as he is me having this Let's pray over this. God will bless it. God will still multiply it. I felt real. I have real sensitivity about those things. Kansas City, Missouri, after church, a woman and man came up with a big sack of money. And they said, we hear that you pray for people to be prosperous. I said, yes. They said, we brought this money to pay for your prayer. And I, th I went in a trembling. I thought, I would, sh you talk about anxiety. I didn't want God to kill me on the spot. I said, oh, I can't do that. I will pray for your prosperity. But I said, you don't trade money to give me. So I will pray. I will pray regardless what. I've had a number of experiences like that. And I want to say this. As much as I believe in prosperity, I believe in the laws of prosperity. The law of covenant with God. The law of the tithe turning 20% back. I believe in sowing with expectation. But I want to say this to all the ministers. Every Sunday when you receive the tithe and the offerings, give the people hope of a return. Give the people a picture of God's guarantee. But be very, very careful not to touch Anything that's not from the Lord. It's got to be right at any price. Father, there are seven seeds that guarantee provision, promotion, and prosperity. I've shared some of this with us. Bless our family. Bless our people. Amen. I'll show you on the screen that I'm going to 
share something with you that you may want to sow a seed in the next 120 days. Here's ways to sow into our ministry. Cash app. I will acknowledge and write you a letter of appreciation, etc. Cash app, PayPal, PayPal. I use PayPal a lot to give and cash out. Zale, TWC. I want to say Australia, Brazil, Canada's here. Ghana, Mexico, Nigeria, South Africa, UK. Miss Renee Poole, my lawyer, who's been a great gift to my life, Miss Viviana Cavada. When she moved years ago to Dallas, Fort Worth, I gave her an office in the Wisdom Center. And I said, Viviana, look through every check, every dollar, every receipt. Examine our ministry to see if anything is wrong. I want it to be right. I've paid thousands of dollars for audits before. I said, I want it right above everything. Pastor John from Canada's here. David from Australia. Linda Everso. Linda, thank you for those words. Christian psychologist and counselor. Thank you for those words. Deborah Whitesell. Billy Ray Peters. My niece, Celise, said it right here. Celise, I hadn't seen you here. Hope you're okay. My, my niece Elise said it this way. God, give seed to the sower. Julie Maggard, Paul Wright. Joy, Enwa Thomas. Joy Slee's here. Jennifer, Mike Robinson's here. Baruch Vera. I never got his Baruch's shipping address. Remember, you wrote it down. I never have seen it. Baruch, I need your shipping address from Chihuahua, Mexico. Remember that? That's real critical to me. Dr. Diana Hudgens-Brown, Becky McCoy, Stephanie Johnson, thank you. Giovanni, Cindy Young, Apostle Cyber Healer, I love that. If the Lord speaks to you for a personal gift of honor to my 56 years of ministry. These are ways that you could sow that if God speaks that to you. Don't do anything God doesn't tell you to do. There's two telephone numbers critical on the screen. 844-789-SEED, S-E-E-D. 844-789-SEED. Second number is 682-717-5359. I went yesterday, I suddenly felt stirred. I've been leasing three buildings for our offices. 300,000 of my books stacked in a big warehouse. And I suddenly felt stirred yesterday to go look for a building for our ministry. And there was a building close by. It's the perfect building for my ministry offices. It's costly, but it's simple too. I'm going to ask you the next five minutes to consider sowing a seed towards it. I'm going to ask you to pray about it. Think about it. I'm asking the Lord for 120 to sow a thousand dollar seed within the next 120 days. I'm asking God for 1,000 to sow 
I'm sorry, for 120 to sow a thousand dollar seed. Your picture will go on the walls inside as one of my founders. We've shared some before when we were renting places. This is the first building that I've seen that I felt like we should buy. I will give them an offer today. If you feel like becoming one of the founders, you call it Wisdom 120. And in the next 120 days, you'll sow a thousand dollar seed to help me buy this building. If God speaks to you, you're joining Wisdom 120. Wisdom Founders is another picture I have of this. The Wisdom Founders 120. If you feel like the Lord wants you to be one of the 120, there will be something special I will be doing for you in the coming days. Very special for you. Very special. I won't say what it is. I won't say what it is. But I have, I have a plan to honor you and show honor to you. There's 120, the Wisdom Founders 120. And if you feel led of the Lord, Brother Mike, I would like to be one of the 120 to help buy the new building. There's no wasted money there, but it's everything I think be very helpful to us. I'm really, really asking the Holy Spirit for 120 who will sow a thousand dollar seed 120 days from today, which is Tuesday. December the 6th. If God speaks that to you, you'll know his voice. Father, I ask you for 120 founders to walk with me in the next 120 days with a thousand dollar seed. This is not from my pocket. It's not to buy me clothes. It's to buy our building for our wisdom ministry. Honor the 120 and everything you do for me, do for them. The 120 names will be in my private Bible. The 120 names will be in my private Bible. Your phone number will be with your name in my private Bible. Nothing magical about that except I'm going to be laying hands on you every single morning in prayer. People who help me at times like these are pure. They're pure hearted. A hundred and twenty who will sow a thousand dollar seed. Father, honor them. And I decree financial wisdom, financial cautions and protection, financial favor, financial ideas, financial opportunities, and I ask you for seven financial relationships in their life. Seven in the next 120 days. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Jennifer, Joyce Lee, Sherry Sewell. We are in month six of listening. Scott Copeland, Mike Robison. Cindy Young, Apostle Cyber, Felicia Young. For some reason, Felicia, I felt like you would be. I will be one of the founders, the Wisdom 120, to sow a thousand dollar seed for your new building. Julie Magger just wrote me, I'll sow the thousand over a three month period gladly. Leanne smiles, I love, love, love sowing and reaping. With faith, Jackie paid. 
Jackie Payne, Wendell Graham, Pastor Joseph O'Binge, all the way from Accra, Ghana. If this is a rare, rare opportunity, we've been leasing three buildings, three different places. This building is going to help us tremendously. I called one of my business people. They're making the offer today. I'll let you know all about it. I'll let you know all about it. I'll give you all the details later on. I hope they'll accept my offer. They may not. I slashed it a little bit. But the 120. Wisdom Founders 120. WF120. Write that down. Wisdom Founders 120. Because I want to spend the rest of my life sowing into their life. The Wisdom 120. The Wisdom Founders. You have 120 days to sow a little at a time, whatever you can. If it's something you want to do, if it's something you would love to do, step out in faith and call me. Call me. We're here at 7 o'clock tonight. Call me today. Email me and say it's my goal. If God doesn't provide it, you're not, this is not a vow. This is not a vow. It's a faith promise, a desire. There's times I've made promises that I didn't feel like I could keep. But I wanted to make that and step out in faith. He said, God said, I'll give seed to a sower. I love you. Priscilla Epps is going to say it if God will provide it. Oh, I love that. Apostle Cyber Healer. Write that down. Says, I pray if it goes well. I will pray it goes well. That's good. If you can sow any seed toward it, toward the thousand, start where you are. I don't care if it's $15. Start with whatever God's given you to join the wisdom founders. 120, 120, who over the next 120 days, four day, months, we'll figure out the date on that. I love you. Bye-bye. God's with you. Steve, Steve. Benninghoff is going to be one of the 120. Steve is going to sow the 1,000. Thank you, thank you, thank you. SC Trooper, Sherry Sowell, Scott Cop Copeland. There may never, never be another opportunity like this in your life. I hope you grab it. I love you. Bye-bye.